Q is building a very greedy 3CC. Oh my gosh. Well, if Navishar is going to commit some, some sort of roach aggression here, this 3CC of Q is going to be punished massively. And there's a lot of space in this main base, which Q currently doesn't see as well. And that's something he's going to have to keep an eye on. There's the roach, Roran. So I think the Nidus Network coming down in just a moment or two. And Namshaw is going to be really, really committing into something very aggressive right now. There's the Nidus Network, guys. Factory immediately goes to the tech lab. He cancels Stimpak, but the Roaches and Queens are going to pop out right next to that factory. So actually, he's going to be in range to get rid of the tech lab. Maybe even the factory here with how many Roaches he's going to have. And so this factory is in a lot of trouble. A couple of Lingus taking some shots from the Hellions. He's killed a couple of SCVs so far. But by far and away, the most important thing to do... Get rid of this factory, because then there's no siege tank production. SCVs will come in to repair it. Now it's time to target the SCVs, and Namshaw needs to not overcommit onto that factory here. The issue is, though, as a bunker does come up to the side, if a siege tank pops out, do they not just go down right away? Well, Namshaw backs off. Mm, I feel like that's given his opponent some opportunities. He's also let this tech lab finish up, and by letting the tech lab finish up, the second siege tank gets to start as well. And that maybe shouldn't have happened here. The few more roaches jump out in the main. Nidus wants to come down to the low ground. He'll reload units into the Nidus because he wants to jump into the low ground now. This natural expansion will be under attack. So roaches and greens already picking their way through everything on this low ground. But I think Cure is actually held on pretty well because of the fact he got that siege shank out. Namshar dove so hard onto the factory and he didn't get the kill. That was the major issue. As we're going to see another Nidus popping out. SCV is a fighter this. Tank on the low ground gets rid of one Nidus network. There's a lot of SCVs, but you can afford to lose workers when you've got this triple CC to some extent. However, I say that you also got to remember the fact that Namshaw is now building up drones as well, going into Roach Speed. Skewer did have to cancel Stimpak to get into this position now also. There's Nidus here going to go down too. It'd be nice to see a Nidus just a bit further back that's just consistently safe. Oh, I love that uh, creep to you. I mean, that's going to be a, a scan that's going to be forced rather than a mule. In a position where you need pretty much all the economy you can get, that's really frustrating as the Queen's going to pull back, still sitting behind the mineral line here. Namshaw taking a lot of damage. The Queen's dropping down. Well, I'm not sure about the Queen's going there, but I guess what were they going to do running over to the left-hand side? Namshaw starts up upgrades and will begin to take a lead with that. These engineering bays have never come into play. Sure, still on that worker lead. Cure just now while well, trying to land that third base. The issue is while he's got third CC and he can keep back up with the workers, it still has been too much damage dealt here by Namshaw. And so his income has been in the lead. And Namshaw also has the advantages such as the upgrade lead. And little things such as that will go a long way for him. This attack over here is obviously pretty nice from Cure, although he's on the verge of losing this third CC. It's going to be really close. The Gross of Bowser ready in a moment. He will not commit for it. Responsible decision by Namshaw. So tempted to just sit there and try and bile it down. Might have killed it. So a little bit of creep being cleaned up already. Infestation pit about to finish up in the main. So that infestation pit finishing up shortly as we see more roaches, ravages, and zerglings all on the way out. The medivacs of Cure flying into the main bay right now. Cure Marines getting picked away at the moment, and these marine drops definitely doing a lot. Cure still only mining on the two bases at, uh, so far. And if these drops are really causing issues, using the knives to get back over here pretty quickly, trying to target down the marauders initially. The issue is it's just the roaches, right? Well, the hive's on the way, and obviously Namshaw is trying to get in towards a greater spite. Marines and Marauders picking up a queen there, and, well, Q a little out of position, right? He's starting to move forwards now. These Lings jumping on this opportunity, getting a couple of siege tanks and so on. I mean, it's just the fear factor of, hey, look at me. You want to move out here? The second you move out, I'm going to be on top of you. At the same time, jumps in to deal with this drop that was unloaded as well. Great stuff. The only thing that isn't great about this, I think, is these Roaches committing in. I'm not sure if they're going to really do that much here. And we're corruptors on the way up, and we've been talking about those brute lords. We're very close to having them in play now as the Vipers, though, unfortunately, fly over the army. Loses one Viper. Corruptors about to pop again. Brute lords will be a massive turning point in this game. And getting in towards this stage of the game is just truly impressive. Corrosive Bars, very nice here, and actually, the Flaming Forward is taking some damage. Corrosive Bars again across the SCVs to push them away to get some kills. We'll get some kills, and we'll get the planetary. Maybe? No, it's still being repaired. The Ravagers taking so much damage here. 15, 16 workers, finally it goes down, some more corrosive bars, the fourth base secure that he's tried so hard to get up, just goes down, but it costs him, Amishar so many ravages. Amishar still struggling to get this fifth base up, though I wonder if it's worth him taking the forward fifth base, or this fifth base here, because this bomb side fifth base just has not been allowed to get up, and all oh, the tank fire is amazing on those first banes. Obviously the Brutal is just not part of this fight, because they're up on the top side of the map again. 
And I feel the Brutal should really kind of set up a base like here and just sit there and then be responding to attacks here, here, and here rather than the drops in the main because they're just not needed to deal with those drops at all. The Ling Bane can deal with that. And the Bruce just being all over the place is really, really affecting Namshot at the moment. It's really costing him at times. Now he takes this more centralized fifth base. I kind of like it because while the Terran will like pushing into this area, it's very good for Brutals to defend a forward base like that because then they are very centralized. They should be in position there. And Kira is working his booty off right now to really get back in this game. I'm sure. And here we are now, 18 minutes in game, and okay, Namshaw's maxed out, but it's not being pretty maxing out. And Q has been able to build up Vikings and Ghosts, and you know, that's always scary if there's Vikings and Ghosts in play from the Terran player. It's a real late game scenario here, as we will see this drop found by the Brute Wolf, so we'll not get towards that forward base. And that's what I mean is, oh great, I've dug in, but the Cryptos need to actually get the attacks off, which they will. Nicely done. But yes, this is what I mean about this forward base. It's so much easier to defend with the Broodlords because the Broodlords want to stay very centralized anyways. And that's exactly what happens right here. So stays very centralized and the Broodlords for once are actually useful rather than just running around hoping they get there in time. Trying to chase Medifax, which obviously is just never going to work for you. Bottom side base might now come up as well. Because Namshaw isn't stretching himself out to the main base as much because Kyo's drops have laid off a little bit there. He's getting this base up, and it doesn't feel like Kyo's created the opportunity to push down there. It's also at this point when Kyo is at the stage where he also doesn't have as much of a pushing army either, right? Like, especially if he's got three medevac units up on the top side of the map, the rest of his army is going to be very focused on ghosts and vikings, and so there isn't much else to really then push with that you want to get, you know, that you can get away with, or that you want to risk bringing across the map. Is he marauders? Abandoned. Kyo just gives them up, doesn't even try to lift them, I guess, because he knows the corruptors are coming in. So that was a good cleanup from Namshaw. He is reducing this resources loss tab from a 7,000 difference to a 5,000 difference in the last couple of trades. So that's working quite nicely. Game as Kua is going to ask for a pause. So a few moments here, and hopefully we get this figured out. We'll see where those Liberators go. He is adding on another one as well. He might just want to build up the Liberator account to really get into a position which is like, hey, you know what? I want to just really solidify my pushes, make life difficult for you. As we see extra Ghost Academies as well, and that means it's nuke time in the very near future. The first nuke already building on this Ghost Silo. It's going to be up in a few moments, and that's going to be another thing that can harass around the map and keep Namshaw distracted here as this game continues to establish. A couple creep team has picked off. Namshaw not really allowed this creep to go anywhere beyond the center of the map as he does start up his spore crawler wall as well. In these later game scenarios, if you're going to fight in the middle on creep, if you can get the spores underneath, it's only going to turn the tide further in your favor. A little bit more Ling Bane continue to come forwards into the front. Spores finishing up, Broods and Corruptors hanging around. And we do see where have those Liberators got to. Are they going to harass? There's a few more of them on the map now. Looks like there they go, they're off to harass. Again, you can just do so much with those like we were talking about as we are going to be seeing this nuke going to drop down on this hatchery on the top side. This uh, Liberator is going to go around to this base here, probably has the most potential for damage. This nuke tickles a couple of overseers in the hatchery and he's going to set up another one on top of the army actually. Looks like Namshaw will not get in towards that ghost to be able to pick it off, so it buys Cure a little bit of time where he doesn't have to deal with this army. Nuke is going to drop down and more nukes are building. Remember though, those nukes are expensive. They don't just come for free. This is Liberator Seaching Up and that's six kills. And again, has not yet been dealt with. And that's something Namsha has to go and focus on. Another nuke dropping into play. At least I heard it as all the ghosts get forwards and Namsha. A mistake there as he allows the ghosts to get in sniping range. And finally, Corruptors go back, deal with that Liberator. And that's what I'm talking about. It's exactly what we mentioned in that downtime. The Liberator is a bit of a distraction as Namshaw deals with it. The Ghosts find a chance to get in there and get a few snipes off. Well, Brutal's pressing forwards. This starts to become very important here now because Namshaw will not want to let QA get to this bottom base. If they start mining on an even number of bases, Namshaw is in trouble because in the long run of this game, Namshaw has traded so much worse. Now, that said, if Namshaw can deny a base and take one extra base for himself, this works out perfectly fine for him as... <laughs> then you kill the two command centers. I was thinking, is that going to kill those CC? And yes, it is. CC rebuilds, gets killed instantly by the Brutals. This nuke should get cancelled. Oh, he doesn't have the detection to reach that ghost. The Vikings will come through for a shot on the Brutlord. Some SCVs have been going down. The top side base denied by just a couple of Zerglings for the moment. Medifax boosted over, but there's no units inside it. He just nuked his own ghosts! 
No, we just missed it. But he's nuked his own ghost and suddenly the ghost count is down to six. Oh my god, Kyo, what has he done? Oh no, he only has four, go four six ghosts left. Like he has barely anything. He only has like four in this army right now. I don't know where the other two are. One of them up here harassing. Oh man, well that's an opportunity to push in because there's no snipes anymore. Parasitic bombs coming down. Corruptors up in the skies. The Vikings are disappearing. Everything's being cleaned out right now. Corrupt is picking off everything. The Brutalies are just streaming through. And Cure types out GG. After such a long fought game, it looked like Q was getting himself back into it. But a couple of disastrous moments. Nukes his own ghosts of all things.